human views of human beings. George, Thank over to you. Thank you, George. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. So, a couple of months ago in March, um, AlphaGo, the algorithm developed by Google, beat this guy, Lissadol, in the game of Go, which was something that most AI experts um, thought it will happen 10 years from now. IBM, with IBM Watson, one of the founding partners of this event, is claiming that a system can diagnose lung cancer with a rate, um, the success rate of 90% compared to 50% for human doctors. And RBS has shared uh, around 550 jobs, if I'm not mistaken, and replaced them with robot advisors. So AI is very, very much in the news. Meanwhile, robots are evolving apace. Uh, they're not the uh, sort of mainframe type of machines of the past. They are becoming more agile, more nimble. They crawl, they fly, they roll on wheels, they swim. They're becoming embedded on everyday life. And that's thanks to all kinds of different technologies converging on robots as a platform, indeed. So new actuators, new sensors, indeed AI. Um, our smartphones will be something like uh, supercomputers where we can uh, inst program our household robots. So robots are evolving, AI is evolving, and those two technologies are supposed to be uh, triggering a new industrial revolution, as many of the previous speakers alluded to, the fourth industrial revolution. So my question, my first question is, is it hype? <coughs> is it for real? Is it something that the media are creating so that the guys like me get invited into places like that? Or is it not hype? And if not hype, why not? Okay, what are the real reasons behind this fourth industrial revolution? So to answer, this, to answer this question, let me go back to the first industrial revolution. Very briefly, on your left hand side, you'll see one of the precursors of uh, what's steam engine, uh, what the technology that actually triggered, as you know, the, the first industrial revolution. But steam engine and steam power were not invented in 18th century England. They were invented in uh, first century <coughs> Roman Alexandria. Right. So around 50 AD, uh, a Greek engineer called Hero discovered steam uh, power and built this engine. So one of the interesting questions in the history of technology is why didn't the first industrial revolution happen in Roman Alexandria? Why did it take another 17 centuries to occur? The technology was there. So I would argue that, and you know, lots of people have tried to answer this question. There's lots of interesting question, uh, answers, but let me give you my sort of answer to this. I think there are two things that need to happen at once for an industrial revolution to occur. One is that the cost of human labor must be a lot greater than the cost of using an alternative technology. So there must be this imbalance. And the second is that this technology has to be scalable. That is, uh, it can be manufactured, in, in, copied in, in, in a quick way, in an easy way, and distributed far and wide. So let me go through those two reasons and see if they, they hold true today. So, I think you'd all agree the past few decades have been great for the world economy, mostly because of cheap labor from China. So what happened was like, you know, massive millions of uh, people from the rural areas moved into urban areas, into cities, some of which had to build, be built from scratch. And this is what caused, if you like, uh, this, uh, this economic boom around the world, uh, GDP growing, uh, inflation being down, and um, you know, interest rates being low, and, and so forth and so on. Now, this, this sort of bounty of, uh, created by China uh, is coming to an end, has already come to an end, actually. Uh, the, the cost of labor in China has increased over the past few years, as you can see in this graph, and as you probably have heard through the news. And indeed, what China is doing is massively automating its labor force. Uh, the market for robotics is estimated to around $137 billion by 2019. Around 67% of that investment will happen in Asia, and most of this investment will happen in China. So labor cost is increasing. It's the end of cheap labor. Now, the alternative technology that could replace labor, which is uh, robotics, the cost of this technology is decreasing rapidly. So, you know, you can, if you're a company, you can have an average of 16% savings by using robots. Now, when you compare humans with robots uh, in terms of cost, you need to understand also the difference between OPEX and CAPEX. Now, humans have a high OPEX, but not much of a CAPEX. Robots is the opposite. 
But the capital ex expenditure of I mean, how much you need to spend on buying robots is dropping dramatically as well. Like um, a company called Rethink Robotics is selling collaborative robots for around twenty to $25,000, which is a, is a price that even small manufacturers can afford. So you have those two uh, inequalities, if you like, labor cost going up and the alternative technology dropping. So it's a no-brainer, really, for companies to automate their workforce. But how about the scaling factor? Well, I'm preaching to the choir here. AI has become a, a platform, basically. Uh, I think that's, that's the significant new thing that makes, makes this difference. I mean, AI has been with us for, for 60 years, right? What's the new thing is that you can scale AI massively. You can embed it in all kinds of systems. And that means the technology, the disrupting technology, the technology that can replace the humans is scalable uh, massively. So the two reasons are there. Okay. So if, you know, robots replace our brawn and AI replace our brain, what is there left for us to do? Is this the end of work? And that's serious business, of course, right? Uh, a few years back, a couple of economists from Oxford University did their research. Uh, many of you may be familiar with this graph. Um, they looked into US, uh, US labor uh, data. And uh, they're trying to figure out uh, what the impact of automation will be. And they came up with an amazing number, like 47% of jobs will be obliterated in the next 10 years because of automation. And this has caused a lot of, a lot of discussion. Since then, however, a number of more nuanced um, uh, research has taken place into the impact of automation. I'd like to very briefly go over uh, one that I particularly like a lot, and it's ongoing, as far as I know, from McKinsey. Uh, what these guys did, which is a much better way of actually understanding the impact of automation to jobs, is deconstructing the jobs to activities and look at uh, the activities themselves and see what, which of those activities can be actually automated. So they came up with this number, like 47% of job activities can be automated today with, with today's technology. Now, if you add AI to that, right, the number goes up to 58% of job activities automated. And let me explain what that number means. First of all, according to those guys, only 5% of jobs will be obliterated as compared to 47. Wow, great news, right? Not quite. What is 58% percent means is that 60% of current jobs will have 30% of their activities automated. Which also translates, I'll put a dollar figure in that, in about $1 trillion saved in wages by companies. Which sounds great for companies. However, this is $1 trillion less of wages for human workers. And this is the big automation of paradox. The, the, the paradox of automation, if you like. Okay. Now, once you have uh, automated systems replacing humans, and those automated systems produce uh, products and services, those humans that are not longer used, they don't have any money to buy those products and services. So how you, how you close the loop in an economy that is, that is disrupted in this way? Now, we at uh, Willie Stars Watson, we did some research ourselves, and we looked at the impact of automation at entry-level jobs, okay? The jobs that graduates get once they, uh, they leave university enter the, the job market. And we found out that many of those entry jobs are very susceptible to complete obliteration. Uh, an example here um, I, I'm putting up is comparing, let's say, a marketing manager entry level with uh, a SaaS system of marketing automation with some AI. I mean, again, it's a no-brainer. $120,000 per year for a company to, uh, to, to keep a person to do this job as opposed to around 20 grand today, maybe less tomorrow, again, a no-brainer. But look at the impact. What will happen to the world when young graduates will not be able to enter uh, the job market? Uh, or, or what does that mean? Uh, what does that mean for the educational system? What does that mean for, for hope for young people? So there will be major disruption in, in, in the labor market. Be, you know, there's no way of, of mincing our words about, around that. So, what the future will be like? I would like to highlight a, a fact that this sort of disruption in the job market is already happening because of the gig economy. And if we want to have an idea or start thinking about what will happen with AI and robotics, we only need to see what's already happening with digital platforms, with, with talent digital platforms. And what we see, of course, 
is that increasingly companies are reducing the full-time employees and they're using the di those digital platforms in order to uh, acquire you know, desired skills on a contract basis. So we definitely see a shift towards a, a more sort of uh, dispersed model when it comes to employment. And maybe that's telling of what the future will be like. So let me summarize a little bit of the thought so far, you know, what the impact of the fourth industrial revolution may, may be on the workplace. Okay, so back to my point about the digital platforms, full-time employees become free agents, probably um, empowered by AI. And as the collaborative economy becomes much greater, then perhaps that will have an uh, impact, a knock-on effect on everything around financial uh, our financial system, you know, things like benefits, pensions, investments, and so forth. Probably block blockchain technology will be something that will be used m more widely and more increasingly so because of this change, this huge disruption in the, in, the, in the job market. As you have more and more people being responsible for their uh, sort of uh, financial well-being, as opposed to companies looking after for them over a longer period, the, gov the role of government will be increased. Uh, probably, you know, through universal income. And there's already some countries uh, experimenting with that, like Finland, uh, Canada, Holland. And I want to sort of talk a little bit more about those last two bullet points. What will happen in the organizations themselves? So if given this sort of macroeconomic sort of disruption, what will happen in the, in the microeconomy of, of the firm? So the basic philosophy be behind systems nowadays, or ha has been for a while, is something usually called the zero latency enterprise. So you have like uh, your organization structured, organized in some way, a hierarchical matrix or whatever. And you have systems running in the background, applications and data that feed the right information, hopefully to the right person at the right time. <coughs> what we will see as these organizations change, they become disrupted, they become dissolved and dispersed, they become more like uh, connecting, p connected platforms of talent, if you like, delivering value and empowered by AI, you will see increasingly so a, a new layer of technology intermediating between people and back-end technology. And, you know, we've already heard where the future goes. And my, you know, what, what, what David said about Microsoft points towards that direction. The impact of that will be enormous. I think that what AI will ultimately do, it will make all hardware disappear and maybe transform information to very much like electricity. So as cloud uh, was the first uh, factor in making information like a, like a commodity, like a utility, if you like, AI will take this to its logical conclusion. So you can imagine a future when you just design something that you want and then just plug it into a global grid of information and the right information flows through the system. So AI will have a tremendous impact in business organization. Okay, so final slide and final thought. So you're a, a C-class executive or you're sitting on the board and you're looking at this you're sitting at the far horizon, this huge tsunami of disruption with robots and AI coming towards you. What do you do? What do you do about your human talents? What do you do about the human use of human beings, which happens to be the title of my, of my talk as well? Uh, what we do at Willis Styles Watson, uh, the way we um, advise our, our, our clients around uh, future-proofing their business is to rethink their business along three dimensions, if you like. The way they, they construct their jobs, uh, their assignment, how you think about jobs within the organization, how this will change, will become more dispersed, will become more activity-based, will become more um, project-bound. How you think indeed of your organization, as I alluded to, uh, organizations will change, will become more like people networks, and in fact will be a, you know, a, a more sort of scaling agile within organizations, if you like, uh, more collaborative and flexible. What does that mean? How, how, do you, how do you prepare yourself to change and make your uh, organization leaner and more nimble and more agile? And finally, rewards, a very, very important aspect of the and um, a result of uh, the fourth industrial revolution. How do you move from uh, sort of the established additional system of you know, salary benefits and so forth, which is long-term collective and so on, how do you move to the new mode, short-term, individualized, imaginative, perhaps? So th the fourth industrial revolution is, is real. Uh, there are some very good reasons behind it. Um, there will be massive impact in our society. Uh, this is not an upgrade, this is a, a, a revolution. 
that's for sure. And um, if there's that one piece of advice that I give to people, including myself, is be prepared. And also be prepared to be amazed. Thank you very much. George, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, for this